Sonic Boom as a weapon. In 1969, the USSR led a small yet potentially devastating conflict in the Far East with its communist ally, China. Soviet High Command came up with the idea of a completely new type of weapon, an aircraft that could kill without any munitions at all and leave no contamination to the area where it strikes. The M25 was to be the first and only aircraft designed to use its sonic boom to devastate enemy troops in an open terrain battlefield. But was this the real background of the story and why did the project never come to life? Put on some headphones as we investigate the incredibly loud M25 Hell Reaper. But if you think you can come up with an even wackier strategy for taking over the world, then I have the perfect game for you. Our sponsor, Conflict of Nations. Conflict of Nations is a free online PvV strategy game. Choose a real country to lead in a modern global warfare, fighting up to 128 other players in real time, in games that can take weeks to complete. Use many different units to build your army, from tanks to submarines, declare war on your neighbours or forge alliances with other players. I love the fact that it takes a long time to play around so you can live your life whilst taking over the world. It's on both PC and mobile, and if you sign up with the link down in the description, you'll get an exclusive gift, 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free. This offer is only available for the next 30 days, so don't lose time. Back to the video. In the late 50s and early 60s, after Stalin's death, his obsession with aircraft was quickly changed in the military circles of the USSR. Strategic bombers were a thing of the past, and a new designation appeared, strategic missile carriers. Khrushchev's new obsession with ICBMs and rocket technology was paving a new way of conflict. A whole new world of alternatives and options opened up and top-ranking Soviet engineers and constructors started working on these new ideas. And one of these was completely off the charts. Not much was known about this project up until recently when some of the top secret files were declassified and when one of the chief engineers of the Masyshev Bureau, Stanislav Smirnov, gave the insight to what was really happening behind the veil of secrets back in the late 60s. As his story states in the article published by the magazine Wings of the Motherland in 2017, it actually wasn't the Sino-Soviet conflict that created the idea and need of such a weapon but rather the idea was already there a year before the conflict in 1968. Vladimir Vasilievich Strominsky, the director of the Institute of Theoretical and Applied Mechanics, started playing with the idea of creating a completely new weapon that could deal damage on a large scale by the end of 1968. Initial tests with this nugget of an idea were performed at the Lipesk Air Base with MiG-21s to see how much power a sonic boom shockwave could actually create. And needless to say, the results were promising. Strominsky knew that the MiG-21 simply could not create a shockwave large enough to deal serious damage, rather just break glass and burst some eardrums, so that's where the story of the M25 starts with a low rumble. He decided to go to a meeting to see a certain gentleman that could have changed the history of aviation and warfare in general. Vladimir Mikhailovich Masyshev, the same guy responsible for all kinds of daring and futuristic aircraft designed throughout the Cold War. According to international standards, overflight at sonic boom speeds is not considered an opening of fire and is not a reason to unleash a war. This is the whole philosophy behind the project. 
After joining forces and ideas, they realized that they would need a completely new airframe with at least four engines to create a special type of shockwave that was going to lay decimation to the enemy. A simple name was given to a new top secret project, Theme 25. The reason that they had to return to the drawing board was because of normal aircraft design. A typical plane wants as little drag as possible to preserve fuel. Low drag also means a lower sonic boom. Thus, this new design would need to be radical and fly in the face of engineers everywhere. This contender would weigh in at 110 tons, 30 meters long, and have a wingspan of 25 meters, giving it the appearance and aerodynamics of a flying brick. Flat surfaces would replace round cross sections, and there would be two tails either side of the rear. To push through the air at speeds needed to go supersonic, the plane would need four vast engines mounted above the fuselage, engines which would be ungodly powerful and guzzle fuel. Other alternative considerations were considered, such as having the engines under the wingtips, and I can't believe I'm saying this on a plane video, increase the amount of drag. The sheer forces and heat would require an experimental material for the plane itself not to tear apart in flight. And there would be a single pilot situated at the front of the plane riding the sonic boom like a surfer riding a record-breaking tsunami. Under the bottom of the plane, there would be a special fuselage protrusion described simply as a ledge. It would extend when the plane was lining up for attack and increase the drag by up to 60%. Upon approaching its target, the plane would fly low to the ground, mere meters at Mach 1.4. It would deploy its ledge and wreak havoc. The final result, a sonic boom shockwave that would reach up to 6 psi, enough to collapse buildings, suffocate tanks, and burst heads. Gruesome stuff indeed. Gruesome stuff on paper, however. Whilst this aircraft's brochure has all the bells and whistles needed to secure funding and to impress the West, there were several major flaws. The first was those supersonic engines. Whilst they had engines that could push a aircraft to those speeds, they weren't suitable for the project. Whilst the Russians did have impressive engines for the time, such as the considered AL-21F, they didn't make the grade. The team was looking for an engine design that could punch the plane of this scale beyond Mach 1.4, but the best that they could do was Mach 1.15. The thought was given for the plane to be equipped with rockets for its attack run to get it over the line, but this would not only increase the weight and drag, but add to the heat generated. Plus, you can imagine all of the considerations that would be required for adding rockets to an already extreme plane. Which ties into the second problem. It was that this would be an extremely hard and dangerous aircraft for pilots to fly, especially to fly supersonic at such low altitudes. The plane itself could only really be deployed over perfectly flat terrain, or some kind of autopilot would need to be developed to compensate for any bumps in the terrain, which you would expect in a real world scenario. So to put it bluntly, this plane would only really be effective in the plains of Nebraska. Having no engine suitable was a major roadblock for the team, and it led to other complications with the design, requiring more money and resources to overcome. There was also the nagging Pandora's box that the creators didn't actually want to open. Would a weapon that could kill on such scale even be ethical to develop? What if it was used against defenseless civilians? Ultimately, these factors led to the cancellation of the program, with it only reaching as far as wind tunnel tests. By this point in the story, the project had gained quite the reputation within the party, one that was seemingly becoming less and less feasible to realize. With the additional doubt that this sonic boom weapon would work, the government decided to pull the plug in 1972, the M25 to never return with ironic silence falling over the project. 
The final question is, would this plane have even worked had it been built? While the science was thought to be completely understood back in the late 60s, they were hopelessly naive. Today we know that sonic booms are far more complex and using it as a weapon is highly unpractical. In 2019, NASA conducted the first supersonic flight formation test flights to see how the waves interact with one another and how damaging it can be. The result was that the data was far more complicated than anyone could imagine. Had the planes flown with destructive intent, it would have been absolute, giving heavy weight to those ethical concerns. What's the point of a weapon that kills friend, foe, and even the innocent? But that wouldn't be the end of it. The Soviets did actually try to use sonic booms as a weapon a bit psychologically in Afghanistan. But we can't say for sure how exactly effective it was. And it is well known that flybys with jets are often used as a deterrent and a psychological pressure, used effectively in the civil war in recent conflicts in Yugoslavia, Libya and Ukraine. What could have been a truly scary and gruesome weapon stayed only in an old dusty archive marked with a top secret stamp and was never seen the light of day and maybe that's for the best. But remember, next time you're out on an open field and see a glint on the horizon, the Reaper might be watching and coming for you low and faster than you could ever imagine. Special thanks to today's video sponsor, Conflict of Nations. Don't forget to get your free exclusive gift of 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for the next 30 days. You can click the link in the description. If you want to follow Found and Explained across the internet, then you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and believe it or not, TikTok. So why don't you give those social medias a follow and I'll see you elsewhere. But if you want to be like the Russians and thinking always ahead, then why don't you come and watch the next video right now on Patreon. That's right, we have a Patreon. And on that, you get to see videos early, suggest future topics and chat with me directly. Thanks so much for watching.